we're going to do these three examples of finding the image of a vector under a given transformation. All of these transformations are between real n spaces. For example, the first one is from r cubed to r cubed. So these linear transformations are also matrix transformations, which means that each one has a standard matrix. So once we evaluate the transformation of each vector, we'll also find the standard matrix for the transformation and confirm the image we found using matrix multiplication, because linear transformations between real n spaces are actually just multiplication by matrices. They are matrix transformations. If you need more of a thorough introduction to this stuff, there are links in the description to my lessons introducing these topics. But let's go ahead into problem one and evaluate the transformation TA of this given vector, one, two, zero. We can look here to see how the transformation operates. The first component will be x plus y. So x plus y, that's three. The second component will be three z z is zero, so 3z is zero. The third component is negative y. y is two, so negative y is negative two. That is the image of the vector one, two, zero under this transformation. We can evaluate it with this equation, but we could also use matrices. To find the standard matrix A for this linear transformation, we just create a matrix that is three by three. We need three rows for the three output values, and we need three columns for the three input variables. Then all we have to do is in the first column, put the coefficients of that first variable X. The coefficients are one, we see one X, and then in the next component, it's zero x's. And then in the next component, it's zero x's. This is just capturing what would happen if we plugged in the standard basis vector one zero zero into this transformation. Similarly, in the y column, we need to capture what would happen to the standard basis vector zero one zero if it's plugged into this transformation. To find that, we just look at the coefficients of y. In the first component, y has a coefficient of one. In the second component, y has a coefficient of zero. In the third component, y has a coefficient of negative one. Similarly for z, z has a coefficient of zero, then a coefficient of three, and then a coefficient of zero. So this is the standard matrix. This linear transformation really just multiplies the input vector by this standard matrix A. So if we took this matrix A and multiplied it by the input vector one, two, zero, we should get the vector three, zero, negative two. Matching up this first row with this first column and doing the appropriate multiplication and addition, we get one plus two, which is three. Then matching up this row with this column, we get zero. And then matching up this row with this column, we get negative two. So three, zero, negative two, which agrees with our previous answer. You can see that multiplying by the standard matrix accomplishes the transformation exactly as it's described. Let's move on to number two. This is a linear transformation from R squared to R squared. So since it's a linear transformation between real n spaces, it is also a matrix transformation. Let's go ahead and evaluate the image of this vector x. So we have TA of the vector four, negative two, and the transformation tells us what this is going to get mapped into. First, we have three y minus x, so three times negative two minus four. Three times negative two minus four is negative six minus four, so negative 10. And then we have two x, so that's gonna be two times four, so eight. That is the image of the vector under this transformation. But we could have accomplished this same thing by using matrix multiplication. All we have to do is find the standard matrix for the transformation. It turns out this is the standard matrix. We can find it by looking at the coefficients of the variables x and y in this equation. x has a coefficient of negative one, and then a coefficient of two. y has a coefficient of three, and then a coefficient of zero. So this column is capturing the images of the standard basis vectors from the domain 
when they get transformed under this equation. So finally, we could have arrived at this same answer, this negative 10, 8, by taking the standard matrix and multiplying that by the given vector for negative 2. Let's go ahead and do this multiplication. First, we would match this row up with this column, getting negative 4 minus 6, which is negative 10. And then we'd match this row up with this column and get 8. Of course, that agrees with what we expect, negative 10, 8. The effect of this linear transformation is just multiplication by this standard matrix. All right, last example. This transformation is from R4 to R3. It takes in four inputs and gives us three output components, so a three-dimensional vector. Here's the vector we're going to plug in. Let's go ahead and do this. So TA of 2, negative 1, 0, 1. Now, based on the equation, the first component will be z minus 4w plus x. So that's 1 minus, so that's 0, the z value, minus 4, because w is 1, plus 2. That's plus x. So minus 4 plus 2, so minus 2. The next component is 2x plus y. So 4 plus negative 1, so 3. The third and last component is y minus z plus w. So y minus z plus w. That's going to be negative 1 minus 0 plus 1, which is 0. And so this is the transformed image of the vector x. We could have accomplished this same thing by multiplying by the standard matrix seen here. Again, this just comes from the coefficients. The coefficients of x are 1 and then 2 and then 0, 1, 2, 0, and then the coefficients of y, and then the coefficients of z, and then the coefficients of w. The coefficients of w, just for one more example, are negative 4, and then 0, and then 1. So we could have arrived at this same answer, negative 2, 3, 0, by taking the standard matrix and multiplying it by the input vector. The input vector was 2, negative 1, 0, 1. So we could have just multiplied this by 2, negative 1, 0, 1. Doing this multiplication, we'd have this row matched up with that column. That's going to be 2 plus 0 plus 0 minus 4, so minus 2. Then we would have this row matched up with this column, which is going to be 4 minus 1 plus 0 plus 0, so 3. And then for our last component, we would have this row matched up with this column, and that's going to be 0 minus 1 plus 0 plus 1, and so that is 0. This, of course, agrees with the answer we expected, negative 2, 3, 0. So this linear transformation, all it actually does is multiplies the input vector by this standard matrix A. So that's how to evaluate the linear transformation of a vector and how it can also be carried out using matrix multiplication. You just have to find the standard matrix. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh. Uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind Two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus Finger count and calculus, I'm the V to the T, my parameter the rapidest Happens like this, my lectures the most prominent, dominant Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together Like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need